Hi and welcome to another Morgana Monday demo where Morgana will be demonstrating the painting of this beautiful Christmas rose um, and also will be giving you a book recommendation, one that I, I highly recommend as well. I also think that this dog rose or wild rose would make a wonderful holiday or Christmas card and so you can find it in our playlist for Christmas card ideas. Hello everybody and welcome back to Morgana Mondays. Uh, today I'm going to be painting for you this lovely um, festive inspired Christmas rose. Uh, doing some negative painting today and I was inspired to create this piece by uh, the wonderful Anne Blockley. This is uh, today's book recommendation, Anne Blockley's Watercolour Workshop. Uh, I was recently uh, got a hold of a copy of this and uh, I've been inseparable from it ever since, I must admit. Um, so consider this your monthly book recommendation. Uh, it's got loads of sort of fantastic um, little projects in, ideas, sort of workshops, skills and techniques. Um, and this festive rose was inspired by one of those. So uh, this is a <laughs> very hearty recommendation. So today's tutorial is inspired by the wonderful Anne Blockley. Um, I chose this as my reference photo. This is a free use photo from the website pixabay.com where you can find lots of lovely and beautiful photographs that are free use for artists. Uh, it's a wonderful resource that I can also heartily recommend. So I'm beginning today with a, a really loose and light pencil outline of my flower, uh, just the white parts, and I have now masked it out using um, some drawing gum. I use the brand Pebio drawing gum, but of course whatever uh, masking fluid or drawing gum you have, what works for you, uh, will be fine as well. Uh, as I said, you only need to mask out uh, anything you want to keep white, so for me just the white petals uh, of this lovely flower which I'm then going to go around with some lovely uh, thick green paint and start to uh, introduce some rough leaf shapes. And I'm using um, a round brush for this, a sort of medium sized round brush from uh, Princeton's Neptune range which is a really nice brand of synthetics. Uh, and as you can see, I'm using plenty of paint and uh, plenty of water as well to make sure that I get my paint moving nicely across the paper. The paper I'm using is a Milford brand 100% um, cotton paper and I've cut it down from a quarter imperial sheet, which is quite large, to um, one eighth. So I've cut my sheet in half. Uh, so this is uh, measures around uh, seven and a half inches by 11 inches or... Um, 28 centimetres by 19 for those of you who uh, like metric. <laughs> so it's not the largest painting in the world. I find a smaller size can sometimes be less intimidating to work on for something like this. As you can see, I'm just trying to be really quite sort of loose and spontaneous. And rather than sitting there and painting away actual leaves, I'm just trying to make marks with the brush that look as though they could potentially be leaves or, or, or leaf shapes. So we're going for a really nice sort of loose look around the uh, edge of this flower. Nothing too realistic. Uh, we're sort of doing this in vignette style in a way. We sort of want to have the uh, greenery sort of coming off at angles from the beautiful rose, which is of course the centerpiece. And at the moment I'm using two greens today, both uh, sort of pre-mixed greens. So um, we've got Hooker's Green, which is the one that I started with. And I'm now just introducing a little bit of Viridian Hue, which is a lovely um, soft green with a slightly bluish tinge, as you can see. So now just adding plenty of water down here on this side because uh, I decided I wanted to get some sort of really nice, loose, interesting shapes in there as well. So just adding plenty of water onto the paper and then dabbing in the paint uh, and letting it sort of move and run of its own accord. Um, as you can probably tell, my board is at a bit of an angle, um, so the paint is running down. 
um, but it's not a terribly steep angle so it's not running too far I would say it's probably about 30 degrees ish now to add extra texture uh, you can use a piece of tissue to dab out uh, the paint as you can see and just sort of scrunching it up and then very carefully sort of blotting here and there and it's leaving these interesting little marks uh, in the paint so some light and some dark there which is uh, going to give us extra texture which I can then sort of add in different sort of shapes and colours over and then blotting out again you can repeat this process uh, as many times as you like really or as many times as your paper uh, will withstand and just the point here is to just make some really interesting looking uh, loose marks with the paint uh, that are perhaps uh, leaf-ish but not definitely 100% uh, actual leaves you want to keep this really nice and loose looking for now just bringing the green up on this top, sort of top left side as well just to uh, balance out the composition a little bit just try and get the uh, the green vaguely symmetrical <laughs> on both sides well the symmetrical opposites uh, if you want to put it that way And again, just repeating uh, the same process as I used on the other side, just to get a bit of variation in texture here. So now I'm just using a smaller brush to introduce uh, clean water onto these paler parts, because I'm now going to dab in some of our next colour, which is Windsor Red, which is a really nice, bright and strong uh, sort of a classic blue red so to speak uh, really nice and vibrant and this serves the dual purpose of uh, making things look a little bit Christmassy <laughs> where it actually sort of goes onto the white paper and you can see that lovely vibrant red coming through but of course um, when we mix it with the green um, the um, the red sort of darkens down quite nicely and it adds that extra sort of tonal value that um, nice sort of extra darker colour that we need in this painting uh, so it's a, a two for one so to speak so all I'm going to do is use my small brush and I'm just sort of dabbing it around uh, picking up the green, picking up the red and just sort of really trying to be quite loose and spontaneous with how I get the paint uh, onto the paper And trying to continue the, uh, the, the leafy theme by creating these almost leaf shapes here. And this is going to help us uh, later on when I come to uh, do a little bit of negative painting to really bring uh, these leaf shapes out into the fore. Having a lovely sort of mottled, marbled, sort of wet in wet watercolour background uh, is going to serve us really well I think for creating some really interesting um, shapes uh, and getting some lovely interesting um, colours and textures. So as you can see, all I'm doing is just uh, basically switching between uh, wet and wet colour building, just layering up these uh, lovely greens with a touch of red, 
uh, and also pulling more textures out uh, using the tissue. Of course, the tissue technique pulls paint with it as well, so uh, I didn't want this uh, greens to end up too sort of light and too frail looking uh, next to our bright white rose, so this is why I'm going through uh, this layering process. So I'm continuing here with my smaller brush, uh, this is just a, um, a small size 4 uh, round brush, again from um, Princeton's Neptune range, uh, just because it gives me a little bit more control. And here I'm just making sure that that uh, masking fluid rose is completely surrounded by greenery. And now just adding in some extra little pops of red, uh, some of which are going to remain nice and bright and some of which are going to sort of bleed into the green, wet and wet and create those extra little pockets of shadow. Now the uh, last colour I'm going to introduce into this greenery section uh, is a little splash of yellow. Uh, this is Gamboge Hue, which is a, a lovely warm yellow colour. And I'm just, as you can see, dotting it quite carelessly around, <laughs> deliberately so, carefully carelessly, uh, as they say. Uh, and just getting it blended in part with some of these lovely greens, uh, just adding that extra warmth uh, here and there. Um, trying to be a little bit careful because this is a colour that can easily overpower if you let it. It's, uh, it can be quite bold and quite strong but uh, it's also one of my favourite yellows to use. And as you can see, just again, wet and wet, layering some heavily sort of watered down yellow paint into this top section as well, just to get some really nice uh, colour and texture into this sort of first lovely sort of green wash. I also discovered that I really enjoyed sort of pulling these little wild uh, rambling shapes out of this uh, this um, sort of first sort of green layer as well with my small brush, these little decorative flourishes. To me they seem almost like little tendrils of some climbing plant that has snuck up 
and <laughs> climbed up the, uh, the rose stem and is now weaving little tendrils around the leaves and perhaps um, a climbing flower like a, a clematis or a passion flower or something of that nature. Uh, either way, I think they look uh, very pretty and rather festive. But again, I'm trying not to be too perfectionist -y about them uh, and keep everything here in this first layer looking really, really loose. So once I'm finished with these little decorative flourishes, um, I'm just going to leave it flat uh, to dry nicely and now it's dry um, I'm going to use my graphics um, rubber cement pickup <laughs> to uh, remove the masking fluid this is a new uh, tool for me and uh, very exciting my first use and you can see it's actually working really well to get rid of this masking fluid very gently um, I would highly recommend this uh, personally, I uh, really enjoyed using it. Um, I think it picked up all the masking fluid really nice and cleanly. You can see we've ended up here with this lovely bright white outline of our flower. Um, but as you can see, the masking fluid does always um, take off any pencil outline that you may happen to have underneath. So I've quickly uh, redrawn the basics of that, just the general uh, petal outlines of the flower just to give me um, a reference to work with later on. But now um, I'm going to add more detail to the greenery. I am using negative painting uh, to add in some lovely rose leaves. So negative painting is where you don't paint the shape itself, you rather paint around it and the shape is created out of the uh, sort of the darker colour that you put around the outside, the, the negative paint, so to speak. So as I hope you can see here, I've just created this little leaf uh, by just putting extra green paint around the outside of it. Uh, I'm going to just show you again because this is a really fun technique uh, and this is probably the simplest way to do it. You can see I'm just drawing a really ragged outline of a rose leaf over this uh, part of the painting that has this um, interesting colour sort of blend and I'm using the Hooker's Green to do this which is the green that I used predominantly uh, in the first wash so it means that I can go around the outside outline that I've just drawn with uh, some Hooker's Green and I can blend it really nicely into this sort of loose green outline that I've already created And there we are, just like magic, out pops a little rose leaf. And I really like this one because the uh, it's got some really interesting sort of colour variation on it, which really does remind me of uh, a, a, a real life rose leaf. You know, they often are quite dark green. Uh, they have slightly darker sort of marbling and spotting here and there, or at least the ones that um, I see in the park do. So uh, that's the sort of thing that I'm aiming for. So really you can just keep going with this for <laughs> as much or as little as you like, adding more and more detail and more and more layers into the outside of this lovely painting by pulling out this lovely leaf detail using negative painting. So I'm just going to uh, keep going with this top section, adding a couple more layers in 
you can see that it's just gone a little bit darker around the outside of the leaves there i think that's the uh, change in light which i apologize for but you can see how those lovely um sort of negatively painted leaves have popped out of the darker greenery uh, in the background uh, this is one of the reasons i was using the tissue to sort of sponge out the paint a little bit whilst i was painting the first wash because of course with negative painting you are putting darker paint on sort of layering it around the shape that you want uh, so i wanted to be able to add this extra sort of darker green and blend it in and still have this lovely sort of pale mottled uh, green leaves popping out And as you can uh, probably tell, even though I am now putting in actual uh, leaf shapes rather than just sort of loose foliage looking mess, um, I'm still trying to keep this uh, quite uh, a loose addition to the painting. So just going for really, really rough uh, leaf shapes uh, using that sort of uh, ragged edge to define where the, uh, the rose leaves are and just having them splaying out beautifully from around the sort of edges, mostly the upper left and the bottom right corners of this little vignette of foliage. And really one of the, uh, one of the joys of this technique of painting is that you can just go ahead and add as many or as few as you like, or uh, as many as your paper size will allow at least. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add just a couple more into this little vignette, but I'm going to skip the video ahead uh, just by a couple of minutes forward um, so that you don't have to watch me painting leaves for another 20 minutes. Uh, and I'm going to just add uh, some last little bits of detail into our white flower, and that's just going to finish this painting off really beautifully, I think. So I'm introducing some blue into the petals. I'm using ultramarine, uh, really quite heavily watered down. You can see a lot of water in there, uh, rendering it very sort of translucent and almost like a soft icy blue. This is just going to be a little bloom of shadow across those white petals uh, to just give them a little bit of shape and a little bit of form. And so it doesn't just look like a, uh, a sort of a pale blob in the middle of this greenery. And again, I'm just using my small round brush because it gives me a good amount of control uh, for this sort of work, for uh, adding the water in and just moving the paint around. You can see I'm following my faint pencil outlines and creating the shadow uh, around the edges of the petals where it would naturally fall, where there is uh, an overlap. And as you can see, I'm just using uh, plenty of clean water uh, to just soften that blue and make it just look like the uh, glimmer of a shadow on the white.
So just as a finishing touch for this flower, I'm adding a little bit of pale yellow just in the centre of the uh, of the bloom, and I'm going to dab in um, some just little stippled spots of a nice sort of burnt, rusty looking orange, which I've mixed up using the gamboge hue with a touch of the Windsor red, uh, and this just adds that little bright centre of this white flower and just helps it all come together. Uh, I dabbed in the orange onto that very, very pale yellow that I already put down, so it's going in uh, wet and wet, which you can see uh, the dots that I put in, they're softening down and sort of merging together and giving a really lovely, soft, natural looking uh, centre to this uh, pretty little white uh, wild dog rose here. And so here we are with the finished piece, our white Christmas rose in a blaze of green foliage. Uh, I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope perhaps you get inspired to try a little bit of negative painting, uh, perhaps in one of your next pieces. It really is a lot of fun. Uh, and don't forget to uh, check out the wonderful Anne Blockley book, Watercolour Workshops, for more uh, similar loose watercolour inspiration. Uh, but that's all from me today, uh, wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are and whatever you're up to, and uh, a very happy painting.